I will continue with some scripts on returning to the basics of Grasshopper. I've shown how to set up Rhino and leave it as a basic uh, naked script that you don't do anything within it. We'll put it on perspective view so we can navigate. And this time we won't bring in anything. We won't even go into, uh, well, not anything, but into primitives and begin with a curve. Let's generate curves. Let's get control of what we do geometrically because of its points. And you say, all right, well, that's not very exciting. Well, I guess we'll have to go into vectors and make a point. And that should be easy enough. And then we'll do things with that awesome point. So here it is. Here's the point. But that's a single point made from X, Y, Z that defaults to 0, 0, 0. And I say just with that data going prior to the script, going before uh, looking at the attributes of what a point is, start thinking of that in sets in a set in, a, in, a, in an idea of a series. So we had a series of points which defaults from start 0, 0 at 0, step 1, and count 10. Basically, we can extract all of that information because we know if this node comes up gray and it's working, then it actually has parameters inputted into it. And because those are just basic containers, we want to know what's in them. Grab your panel tool and say, oh, that's zero. And this one is a one. And this one is 10, which tells me I could start this at anywhere I want between, let's say, zero, dot, dot, and 10. And there's a nice number slider from 0 to 10. A quicker way to do that is actually just type in an integer between 1 and uh, higher than 1, but in between 1 and 10. Just type let number 3, and boom, you have an integer slider between one, uh, 0 and 10. And that's it. You've got some points, and you're saying, oh, well, that's starting that series of points at 5 in the x direction, at 0 in the x direction, or whatever. We'll leave it at 0. And then the steps we can actually have a rational number. So I'm going to take this slider down here, which I've already generated. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to say, well, let's go to rational numbers and see what happens. Input that into there, not take the default. And now I have a series of points that actually change uh, the spacing between them. And I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of that and uh, put it on so I can see it. And I have a wonderful step count that varies in between. And then it defaults to count 10. So what I'll do is just say, well, I want a number slider that goes from, if I type a number between one, or 10 and 100, higher than 10 and lower than 100 as an integer, that will come up as a count. Definitely, I want an integer value of that. And there we go. I have a count of 12 making these points. And there we go. We've got nothing. We've got X going in as a list. And that's basically what it is. So if I look at list and I take a look at what I can do to lists, I can reverse lists, I can shift lists, I can do anything to this, this could be interesting to think about, oh, what would a reverse list do to my geometry? So here's my points. You don't notice anything different in that geometry if I go straight into it or into here through the reverse list. But we're going to save that for later. Hit control, and you'll see a negative red arrow come up. Drag that in as if you were trying to connect it, and it disappears. That's a nice little technique. Another one is control shift. You can pull that out and plug it right in here. And uh, then it says, well, I'm lacking data. So you plug it in, and it's there. And if you hold down shift, you get both installed. And now we have two sets of points, which you can't even tell are on there until you look at what's actually in there. We have a double set of points. So I'm just going to take this node, I'm going to hit control, and I'm going to disconnect that, and I'm going to disconnect this. Now you can go in and just hit disconnect and do it that long way. But there we go. You've got a set of points. Now in the Y direction, how far in the Y? Let's leave it at zero in the Y and just let it sit on this plane. But, uh, and not go up towards... Think RGB, so just think your red, green, and then blue, which isn't really there, but red being X, uh, Y being green, uh, and uh, Z being blue. Uh, now, I do want it to come up and down in the Z axis. Well, one of the best ways to do that is multiply this series by a mathematical function of sine. And you put that in there, and you're like, what happened? Well, it just jumped up and down in the Z axis as points, and it is does have a count. What if I took the... What if I took the steps in that count and made them longer or shorter? I could control these points, and they actually can be interpolated, and a line can be drawn between them. What I'm going to do is keep that count at around 15, and it's going up and down. And this is where you use math, and I'm all into math controlling attributes. I'm simply going to bring in the multiplication node, take that data, plug it into Z, and say I want to multiply this by an integer. Right, not an integer. 
a rational number, I typed in 2.00, which will be a 0 to 10 slider with two decimal places. And I now have points I can control up and down. Nicely up and down. And I could put in more points if I wanted or not, but it's not necessary. Once I've built that geometry and I've controlled that, and it's gone in that direction, you say, what exactly is happening there? What is the order of this list? What is happening? Well, let's go back to param and see it likes what we have. Well, we have a whole series of points. And there they are, x, y, z, listed as a list, 16 in the list. What happens if I take the opposite? Well, not the opposite. I can't call it that. But I'm going to take a cosine, and I'm going to take another multiplication factor, keep it with the same parameter. And I love this little script. Put cosine in there and take my series out and feed that into the y. Now I end up with this weird pointed system. You say, what is going on there? I can't make sense of the data. I'm a little confused. I have 16 points doing something. Let's go now into curves. Take NURBS curves or interpolating, which draws a line between the points, and you have a very strange geometry indeed. A helix that's wonky, that wants to do what it wants to do as I move it, and it does rely on this crazy geometry as I go in and look at all views, remembering standard, right-click on Zoom Extends All, see what it looks like from the front, the sides, now play with the steps and see the patterns I get. And you're like, wow, that's a pretty good spirograph project in the right window. But I'm looking at it from the end. What happens if I change the steps? Oh my gosh, you get these incredible geometries. I never thought I would be generating uh, images like this, which can be projected to a flat plane. I didn't think I'd be drawing like this with these geometries, even though I'm looking down on the end of a helix. A wonderful way to get into this. And I can start it from different sections and even though that's looking like it's twisting and rotating it's actually just coming out farther from the x-axis and keeping with its spin um, once again simple thing to take this into geometry which wouldn't take too much uh, ingenuity throw it into a pipe throw your curve into that cap your ends if you like and this is where i'll explain when i type in zero dot dot two as an integer uh well i typed in something wrong zero sorry zero dot dot two as an integer, I have a choice to throw this in caps as one being none, uh, zero being none, one being flat, and two being round. And I'm going to take it in, plug it in there, and put that in. And then I'm going to make it parametric so if I start to increase uh, the step count, I also increase the radii. And this is where you start to really start connecting your geometries. And you're like, that is a funky donkey. And I didn't think I'd make that in Rhino. And just to show you the complexities and perfection of that in Rhino, I'm going to take it out and bake it. I always group just because I have a habit of doing that. And I will come in here, uh, leave the script by having it on view all, and say, I don't know if I would have made that in Rhino. Well, even if you wouldn't have made that in Rhino, could you go back in and work parametrically? Uh, and I am interested in what happens now when I take this list of data. But could you work parametrically, change the multiplication values, and you'll see your geometry changes at its scale, so you're not dependent upon nodes, uh, commands in the in the in the Rhino line. Here, if I take my count, it's extending out, um, and as I reduce this, it will have less steps, but it also will get a thinner radius as it goes down. So I have this wonderful growing organism, and this is where you might want to bring it by simple plugins into AR Spark, like Fologram AR, and start this. And what something you can do with a number slider is right click it, hit animate. It's choosing 100 frames, and it's recording these for whatever I want to do with them later. Now, I'm one to stay in the fabrication and just get your geometries down, pick an iteration, and make it. But some people like to think of film and animation, so let's run it. And here we go. My first little animation set with a nice script tool. It's going to slow down here. This is that 31 count. And look at all these little controllable little parameters. My script's not too slow moving. It's slowed down in the middle, but what a, what a wienery little worm. And uh, it's still behaving at 86 count, and I've made this little generated sausage. I'm not sure what I'd do with it. I know my good friend Aaron loves tubes, and he might actually like this little script. It's kind of boring. It's trigonometric. It's parametric. It kicks ass. And I haven't even done anything with the data besides. Let's grab this, and let's take the data and start running it through list items. What would happen to that geometry? Sorry. Uh, just got to be careful with your viewing. If I threw it in reverse list and back in. Does the geometry change? Didn't look like it did a darn thing. But if I go into stats, go into here and say, I am going to uh, shift my list of data. 
and I'm going to shift it by a count from zero, and actually I've got a wrap on it, which is kind of interesting. It wants to wrap around to the front again. I have a list length, which is great to know. Just grab your data out. If you can't see your data, go to your param, look at your viewer. You can pull in a panel, but you can also pull in a param viewer, which is a totally different animal, which I'll get into talking about a little later. But it's a way of understanding paths and data and things like that. But let's take a look at what we made. We've got a shift path that if I take this number 18 and I make a number slider from, let's say, 1 to 18, it will shift its list accordingly as we make this geometry. As I play with that shifted list, I change the geometry as to what's happening. Little subtleties, not too exciting, but little things are happening through that. And once again, I could take that radius, and let's shrink it so it's a little less uh, sausage-like to look at. Let's just take that little bit of geometry that we've made, and we've capped both ends, and we've got a shift list. Let's throw that through a little animation tool, and this time I'm just going to take my count down to 20 because I don't want to wait so long. And let's just put it through, and here we go. Got this weird little animation happening as it rolls through 20 in the animation all the way through to 18. And that's just a shifted count. So you could start to make some very different little awkward things depending on the materials you had, pipe, tubes, anything. Not a difficult script to get into. Uh, playful, gets into a little bit of trigonometry and a sequence. And what we're going to do next time is we're going to play with uh, going into sets, sequence, and we're going to get into the range function, which I absolutely adore because you get into the steps and you can start making things parametric through that. I don't use the series as much as I use range. Now think about it. All this has happened. Uh, that's after, and all this is uh, prior. So this is pri the a priori, if you want to call it, group. And then this is all posteriori, I guess that's called. Uh, and that's all coming after. And there you have the ability to deal in the list of data, which is quite simple. I'll just pull it down here, and I will. Actually, that data was actually running. That data I should just grab a new one. Uh, I'll go into Bram, grab a little panel viewer, and say this is basically what I'm dealing with, a series of points within this framework. And what can I do to it in generating them? And what can I do to it after the fact? So this is where I'm all about control and physically and getting towards solids. But let's not start with a solid. Let's not go in and say, hey, I've got to make something. Let's grab solid and I'll go in and I'll make myself a cylinder. Well, a cylinder isn't even capped at the top or bottom. If I threw a big radius into that, let's say 18, we'd see it. But we'd see a cylinder without a top or bottom um, in the radius. There it is. And I should probably put the length in as well. And we have a nice little cylinder here. But what is that compared to the geometry of what I've made? Well, maybe a little more <laughs> engineered and, and decent to think about building something out of. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of that. I'm going to be doing a lot more of this. Attributes to create points in a list or a series or a range and then generating the geometry from them. Keep it simple and keep it fun. Thanks very much for watching.